subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscribe button. Click the bell button and enjoy the latest uploads from our channel. The Note 8 versus the Note 9. And if you should upgrade from the Note 8 to the Note 9, I think this is a question many are going to be having, you know, this summer here going into the fall season. And um, this is a really tricky question here. But for some, it might be easier than others. For some, it might not. Let's begin by talking about the key things that matter when it comes to the spec changes here. And there's a few because the Note 8 was already a pretty well specced out phone. But every year, the Note seems to push the boundaries a little bit more. So when we are discussing the spec changes, we do have a 6.3 inch going to a 6.4 inch display here for the Note 9. It's a little bit shorter, but a little bit wider. So it's got more of that, you know, squared off Note feeling that you're used to on older phones like the Note 5. I would say this one was more skinny and sleek and tall in the Note 8. And you do have a similar 12 megapixel cameras on the rear, but the Note 9 gets the variable aperture setup that you found on the Galaxy S9 Plus. And you get a bump in RAM to eight gigs of RAM if you do go with the more pricey version, which is $1249.99. But consider that you can get like a $400 discount or a $300 discount with the Note 8 against this phone. It could still be under $1,000 for the 512 gig if you're willing to trade this guy in. And the biggest upgrade I think of all is the 3300 milliamp hour battery inside this Samsung Note 8 goes to a 4000. So that's a huge update, especially considering the type of buyers that buy this phone usually tend to use it quite a bit. And this definitely has more stamina than the Note 8. So those are the key specifications that really change here. And I think the one that was felt the most in my time using it so far has been the battery and the Snapdragon 845 over the Snapdragon 835 over here. It's just a little faster and it lasts longer than the Note 8. Okay, so let's take a second to talk about the body and the build. Now, the Note 8 was definitely a big boxy square phone and that doesn't really change to the Note 9, but I think it works very well for S Pen users because you want a flat, you know, like kind of paper-like experience when you are riding with the S Pen and that's why I think this design stays this way for the Note 9. Now, on the body, you do get a 195 grams in weight here for the Note 8. I always thought the Note 8 was a little bit heavy, but definitely not the heaviest phone on the market. But the Note 9 takes it up a notch to 201 grams. So you can definitely feel the Note 9 a little bit heavier. Throw a case on it and it is heavy again. Now, the Note 9 is thicker, 8.8 .8 millimeters versus 8.6. And what I really noticed is if you look closely, that display just seems to poke off the front of the Note 9 just a little bit more. And I don't really like that because it makes me feel a little bit nervous about even having a case on it and dropping it because it just sticks out more from the front. If you notice that display, it's a little bit more slender on the Note 8. So I think that the Note 9 actually has more of a boxy feel than the slender, tall Note 8 feel. So when it comes to the body, they're almost the same height, though. So it don't really matter there. I think coming from a Note 8 to a Note 9, most people are going to say, this is the same phone, but you will notice a slight difference in weight and a slight difference in thickness. But other than that, it's about the same design. So if you liked your Note 8 design, you'll definitely like the Note 9's design when it comes to the body and the build of these two. Both have glass backs on the rear. Both have Gorilla Glass 5. The oleophobic coating has worn off my Note 8 after about a year, but definitely similar design, similar body, similar weight. Not going to be a big difference here. I wouldn't make this a decision of upgrading or not. Design is very close to similar, except for the fact that we have that fingerprint coming down a little bit here on the bottom. Also, the Note 9 does bring chamfered edges on the corners. I think it makes it a little grippier than the Note 8. But other than that, no big deal. Okay, so let's talk about display because this one right here is something we all like to see improvements in anytime we buy a, another $1,000 smartphone. And this area is not a big improvement for the Note 9. The Note 8 had one of the best displays of last year. I think it airs a little bit more on the warmer side. I think the Note 9 is a little cooler in my experience so far. But you can tweak it to basically however you like it. And you do have all these modes. Samsung's been doing some of the best displays in the business. Super bright. It can get really high in the nits when you are outside. So you can really see this thing if you put it in auto mode, auto brightness mode. The Note 9 or the Note 8 could be easily seen. Now, it does come with Full HD out of the box. So you do have to crank it up to 2K if you want the absolute best resolution you can get 
Audi or Note 8, but I never had a problem. And actually, this was one of my favorite phones to ever use in terms of the display. And watching videos or reading books or anything like that has always been an enjoyable experience for the Note 8. But coming to the Note 9, the upgrade, are you really going to be upgrading that much coming to this and not really it does get a little bit brighter i'm not going to lie to you there I, I have noticed it looks a little bit brighter than the note 8 and it definitely has i think a little bit better color calibration than the note 8 it just looks a little bit cleaner on the just colors and the whites just look a little bit better but i mean it's just a little bit but when you have such a good display on the Note 8 and then you just make it slightly better, that slightly better is definitely appreciated. And I think if you want the Note 9, you're not gonna be disappointed coming to this in display. You're just gonna be like, okay, I just kept my great display from my last phone. So this is definitely a slight, just a very, very slight upgrade, 6.4 inch, and just a little bit better calibration whites and a slight bit of brightness more. Okay, so moving on, let's talk about their software differences. So you did get upgraded to Android 8.0 Oreo after a very long time on the Note 8 and you do have Samsung Experience version 9.0. It's now has the ability just like the S9 to go ahead and rotate the home screen here for the Note 8, which I think should have been on it from the start, but you can do stuff like this now. So you get a lot of those experiences that you get from the S9 here now for the Note 8. However, the camera still has that older looking UI, no AR emoji, stuff like that. On the Note 9, however, this is basically 9.5 Samsung Experience version. It's basically the same experience. Almost everything is identical. However, there is the occlusion of the new software for the S Pen. So if we go to S Pen here, let's put S Pen. Uh, S Pen, we're gonna look for the S Pen Remote because now you have more S Pen software. So if we go here, you have the new S Pen Remote, which allows you to take actions like taking photos, you know, scrolling through your gallery, shutter key, media, managing music, Chrome. And this is, this is gonna be open to third-party developers if they wanna work with this S Pen to make their apps you know, work well. I don't think many are going to do it, but it should be available and some people might get on board with that feature. But that's a new thing here. And also, you're gonna notice a difference in the camera software right here. You can see just has that same software as the Galaxy S9 Super Slow Mo AR Emoji. Just the UI is just a little bit different from the one that you can see on the Galaxy Note 8. So definitely a difference there. I actually like the one on the Note 9 a little bit better. It's just a little bit more, I would say, user-friendly than the one on the Note 8. But other than that, I haven't really noticed too much of a difference. Yes, the messages is now blue in comparison to the orange messages on the Note 8. But like I say, this is almost an identical software experience. It's only slight differences, S Pen and camera. Other than that, software experience is going to be like using again the same phone all right so let's discuss their s pens now the note 8 does have a very decent s pen just like the one on the note 9 now, a lot of people complain that these feel cheap for the price of this phone i don't know what you're expecting like a metal pen inside the phone that would probably make it a little heavier but some people i think want a little bit more quality feel because like a plastic cheap pen but whatever it still has that clicking mechanism on it and you do have screen write live message translate bixby vision i put s note there but you have magnified coloring and you could add different shortcuts the wheel here for going into your features is the same on the note 9 creating a note you can say hey or write whatever you want you have different pen modes you can select here markers things like that you can get very creative with the s pen on the note 8 and the features that come to the note 9 are actually not that different so if we take the note 9's s pen out you can see you do have the signature color depending on which one you do go with for this example i do have the lavender pen now in terms of the color wheel you can see create no view all note smart select i did notice live message looks a little bit different and this is just something you're going to notice throughout the note 9 just the software just has some different different themes on certain applications. But other than that, it's not that much different. Now you go ahead and create a note. Let's go ahead and create a note. You could say, hey, what's up? Now I noticed this one feels just a little bit more precise than the one on the Note 8, but that's only because it's new. When I got the Note 8, it felt more precise than the last note. I guess they all just feel a little bit more precise, but they all do basically the same function, which is a huge selling point of the Note series. So you do have a few extra add-ons here with this guy for the Note 9. It does have to be charged in its slot, but it doesn't take that long to charge. And they're really promoting this phone as the best S Pen phone ever on a Note, which it should be because it's the latest one. That's why there's an S Pen on the front of the box. But I think that if you're trying to upgrade from a Note 8 to a Note 9, 
besides those remote control features, there's not really a, a massive change here. So if you care a lot about using it as a remote control, I think it's actually quite useful. It's not really gimmicky, but other than that, if you just find yourself writing notes, the Note 8 will still do just fine. So that brings me on to performance, and this is one area that I think is slight, but definitely noticeable for the Note 9. Now, the Note 8 is definitely no slow phone by no means, but I just find that the Note 9 is just a little bit more snappy when it comes to opening apps, as you've seen right there. Coming home, it's no big deal on either, but it just seems like there's a little bit more occasional touch delay on the Note 8 versus the Note 9. So I just think that with the 845, Samsung every year is improving the speed of these devices, and it's definitely felt on the Note 9. So if you come from a Note 8, to the Note 9, you're gonna definitely feel a little bit of a performance bump. And um, it's not like it's just because it's a new phone. It just feels faster because the Note 8 kind of feels the same way it did on day one. So it's just simply a performance bump. And that's definitely appreciated and definitely feels more powerful than the Note 8 on the day-to-day -day and performance. Now I will do a proper speed test if you wanna see that. Again, it's not gonna be a huge difference in your day-to-day -day apps, but you can definitely notice just a little bit more swift feeling performance for the Note 9. So if you wanna upgrade and get a little bit better performance, definitely do this upgrade to the Note 9. You will appreciate its faster feeling performance and less, you know, a little delays sometimes. I mean, there's not anything massive, but sometimes there was an occasional stutter or delay here on, on the Note 8. Very rare, but it did happen. Whereas on the Note 9, it just seems to fly through things like it's nothing. So the Note 9, a nice improvement, I feel like, in the performance area. Not massive, but a nice slight bump that makes it be felt day to day. Okay, so discussing their camera, the Note 8 was just a beast. 12 megapixel dual OIS, f1.7 on the main camera, 26 millimeter wide angle, and then you had that 2x optical zoom at 52 mil. So it was really a good camera here for the Note 9. This is nothing to mess around with. 2160p, f4k, 30 fps. They should have enabled 60 fps on this phone. I know it was capable of doing it but samsung decided not to maybe they were doing that on purpose so they can just have something else to bring to the note 9 which they did bring 4k 60 here a megapixel camera on the front the software definitely seen improvements to the note 9 but i think overall this camera was fantastic i was able to put the google pixel camera on here as well and get even better photos out of it so overall just great hardware here for the note Eight. And let me go ahead and show you some photo samples I did side by side with both of these. On the Note 9, you can see that you do have the variable aperture dual camera. It's the same setup basically as this one, but it goes from f1.5 to f2.4 now. Same 26 millimeters and 52 millimeters on the 2x. This can do 2160 at 60 FPS, and it can do a super slow motion effect as well. It's really hard to get that, but you can still get it done if you get things properly aligned in that square. AR emoji, which a lot of people find creepy. I don't really care for it that much. You got the hyperlapse mode, and you just have a few more features that you don't find in the Galaxy Note 8. But overall, their cameras are actually quite close in good lighting. It's just the low lighting where the Note 9 seems to exceed a little bit better detail as well for the Note 9, but I mean, it's very slight. And I think that if you're upgrading in this department from a Note 8, it's not gonna be life changing, but it will be just a little bit better. And that's that's kind of what you want if you're gonna pay this kind of money for a smartphone. You definitely want everything to be better. And I can say that being as though it's sharper and pulls in a little bit more detail, the Note 9 camera is better than the Note 8. But you can see the Note 8 is still a fantastic camera and some might prefer it's more warmer looking photos versus this cooler, more toned down picture that you usually get for the Note 9. Now you also have the scene optimizer mode that does come to the Note 9, which allows it to do some AI detection stuff, which can detect text. It can detect like sunlight, dogs, pets, things like that. And uh, you might not like that stuff because it does change the saturation sometimes. It does boost the colors, the exposure, things like that, depending on what it thinks you should do. So if you're the type of person who likes to manually tweak stuff, you won't like it, but the Note 9 does offer that. Taking a look at these photos, you can see the detail is almost identical, and no matter which one you go with, you're getting a fantastic camera on either. I just think that the Note 9 having the better video mode is a little bit sharper detail, and the, le and the more toned down, more realistic looking photo gives it the edge. So yes, you do have an improvement in the camera department for the Note 9. I don't think it's like a crazy huge jump, but having that extra low light capability 
is welcome. So yes, if you're upgrading from a Note 8 to a Note 9, I think the camera is definitely a thumbs up. Okay, let's get on to the real upgrade here, battery life. And this is no joke. I've used both of these already now extensively. The Note 8 just gets schooled by the Note 9 when it comes to battery life. We're talking, I'm talking like one and a half to two hours longer per day on the same charge on the Note 8 nine and that's significant because that one hour or two hours could be the difference between a dead phone and getting to your house or a not dead phone and getting to your house or getting to a charger for that matter now they do both support wireless charging and fast charging so if you do keep things around and you are prepared the note 8 should never die on you because it charges super fast anyway but if you're the type of person who doesn't like to carry a bunch of stuff you just want that phone to last the note 9 is a massive upgrade here in the battery department i went to sleep yesterday you know with about three and a half hours on screen time still had 49% battery life so that means I'm probably reaching around seven hours of screen time with the note 9 at its full you know use of the battery like from 100 to zero so definitely a long-lasting champ here in the battery department for the note 9 this is probably the biggest upgrade you're gonna feel when coming from this phone to the note 9 okay so in terms of the audio quality both do you I'm happy to say have a headphone jack here the note 8 has it down here and the note 9 has it down here as well so both do retain that headphone jack but the note 9 brings a substantial upgrade that the note 8 i was always wishing had because once other phones came out with this feature i was like come on note 8 you're you're letting me down here and that's the stereo sound with dolby atmos here enabled this thing just gets loud for the note 9 so let's take a listen all right so here's one of my videos one of the latest ones let's watch how about we watch the iphone 10 versus the samsung galaxy note 9 Cover this up, you can still hear it. So that's what I'm saying. I mean, before on the Note 8, if you were to use it, you can cover up that audio really easily. Let me go ahead and showcase that right now. So here's the Note 8. We're gonna play that same video. Now look at that. Wow. And don't get me wrong, I know I'm doing this on purpose, but this does actually happen in real life sometimes. So the Note, so the Note 8 definitely gets a huge upgrade there. Now that louder speaker also plays an effect when you're talking to people on speakerphone calls or just, you know, listening to basically any music, anything that uses those speakers does improve the experience for the Note 9. So that's a massive upgrade right there. If you cared about that at all, if you use the external speaker, get this phone, you're gonna be happy. Okay, so a couple of things that I missed here, the Note 8 actually has slimmer bezels on the side. So if you care more about, you know, that all screen kind of feel, I think the Note 8 feels a little bit more like that. However, the Note 9 actually has slimmer bezels at the top and the bottom, it feels like, and it does have a little bit thicker right here. So if that matters to you, you might not like the Note 9. So I want you to keep that in mind. Also, one question I might've missed is, does the six gigs of RAM to the eight gigs of RAM make a big difference? And the answer to that question is it depends. It depends on what you're doing. If you're really pushing this, and I don't think most people push this that hard, even if you're a power user, you're probably not going to use eight gigs of RAM on your phone. No, it doesn't really make a huge difference, but I think having it is better than not having it because in those times when you really need that phone to perform, having that eight gigs of RAM will keep the Note 9 just moving super fast. Whereas with the Note 8, if you're pushing it really hard, you might be using up four or five or most of that RAM on the six gigs. So I think six gigs is the minimum that Samsung phones should have to be very fast, at least a flagship Samsung phone. But the eight gigs is definitely not something you're gonna feel on the day to day until you start really hammering on this phone with like a bunch of apps open, you're you know multitasking with five different tabs on this phone. And I mean, five different pop view windows and you're just doing a whole bunch. That's where you'll see the speed just stay fast on the Note 9, whereas on the Note, Eight, it definitely might feel like it takes a little bit of time to load some stuff, just a slight bit more. Call quality hasn't really changed too much on either of these, so don't expect a huge upgrade in the calling department. However, 
having better speakers on the Note 9 on the external makes your speakerphone calls better. So that's it. That's in detail, basically, these two phones in a nutshell. Should you upgrade to the Note 8, to the Note 9? And you're noticing that most of these upgrades are slight, but I think the ones that are really upgraded are huge upgrades, like to the battery, to the audio experience, and the better low light camera. These are three major factors in having a very complete smartphone. And a lot of people are saying, this is the most complete smartphone. And I can't disagree with them there at all. This phone has basically everything you could want in one package. And I think the Note 8 let us down in the battery department mostly on the Note 8. If it had a big battery, then I would say absolutely don't upgrade. But this battery is the game changer here, I think, for the Note 9. That's the major game changer I've noticed. I could live without that variable aperture camera because the Note 8 had a great camera. I can live without that 6.4 inch, 0.1 inch screen upgrade. I can live without this S Pen remote. That's a cool, neat feature. But I think most of the time we're just going to be jotting notes down anyway. We're going to forget that's even there. Pull out a camera app and just snap a picture out of habit. So I just think that the major game changer is the battery. And if you want to upgrade, grade just think about do i want a bigger battery do i want a slightly better low light camera and uh, that's about what changes here from the note 8 to the note 9 but that's my take on it let me know your thoughts down below did i miss anything i'm sure i missed a bunch you know i'm just sharing my experiences my personal take on these this is subjective so just uh go ahead be nice and just let me know some of the things i missed some of the things you want to mention about these two thank you very much for watching if you found this video helpful entertaining informing enjoying do me a favor click that like button for me and if you're new here consider subscribing for more i got plenty more note 9 coverage coming soon and the iphones are coming to the channel the new ones are going to be here as well as well as maybe the pixel 3 and some other newer phones that will arrive